uh, good day everyone um, uh, to just uh, give a quick uh, intro about myself i'm lokesh and i'm currently working as a senior uh, product manager for chef compliance product portfolio and in that we have uh, chef inspect as well as a product line and uh, prior to chef i've been uh, working with uh, uh, different uh, security products like radware oracle casby uh, uh, semantic uh, security product line so this is uh, a uh, quick intro about myself and i will hand it over to john uh, to intro about uh, himself over to you john Thanks, Lokesh. I'm John Tanello. I'm a technical marketing manager here at uh, Progress Chef. Um, I've done a few of these before, so if you've been to um, some of the shorter and longer webinars, or if you've been to our YouTube site and seen some of the uh, uh, chef features in action, um, I'm behind uh, some of that stuff. Happy to join Lokesh here today. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, John. And. Um, um, in uh, today's agenda, um, I'll be covering the uh, inspect introduction and uh, the basic aspects of the inspect profile. And John will be covering the demo aspects uh, by uh, giving an inspect uh, profile demo uh, uh, in today's uh, session. And uh, let's move to next slide on. Uh, so this is about the chef inspect best practices webinar series we are having. Uh, like one is on scaling uh, infrastructure testing with uh, chef inspect and chef infra compliance space improvements so if you have missed uh, these these webinars uh, please check out in youtube uh, uh, it's it's an interesting session given by uh, tim smith and uh, john and uh, today we are uh, uh, on a chef inspect uh, security profile basics uh, session and uh, there is like interesting sessions conducted by our uh, champs uh, dan and kia uh, please tune to this uh, devrel uh, sessions in uh, twitch software uh, link So uh, before getting into what is uh, inspect, I would like to uh, uh, highlight or I would like to give an overview about our uh, chef compliance product. So our chef compliance product uh, uh, has like five phases. The first one is like acquire phase, where the customers get access to uh, premium audit content and decide which profiles to apply for the compliance need. And customers get uh, started quickly with the help of uh, audit content in terms of CAs and stick benchmarks. So this is like on the acquire phase and in the define phase, shift make, makes it like uh, easy to define a compliance baseline and tune them to uh, uh, organizations uh, compliance need. So you can uh, customize each profile CS or stick profiles according to the uh, enterprise need and user also has an uh, another interesting feature of waivers where they can turn on or turn off the individual controls as per the uh, as per the uh, appropriate uh, business uh, uh, application. So this is on the define phase. And the third one is on the detect phase, where we continuously monitor and uh, uh, evaluate the uh, controls by detecting deviations, uh, uh, by comparing with the intended state and the desired state in the software delivery life, life cycle. So this is on the detect state. And then the uh, fourth phase is like the important phase, uh, remediation phase, where you where Chef provides a critical value by providing the remediation cookbooks, meaning like we, uh, we remediate uh, on non-compliant controls or any misconfigurations with the policy driven uh, remediation capabilities. And these remediation can be applied easily with our uh, premium remediation cookbook. So this is on the remediation phase. And the final phase is on the uh, reporting phase. That is to maintain a comprehensive dashboard and to have like uh, up-to-date visibility or across like heterogeneous assets, uh, different compliance reports based on nodes, based on controls, like pass controls, fail controls, skip controls, wave controls, uh, the reporting phase is used. Um, so this is about the chef compliance product and how it is applied in uh, uh, different phases. Now, so how an audit content is being written by our development team or by or by our uh, customers. So the underlying tool is used is like chef inspect and, and the inspect also helps to write uh, custom profiles created by our customers as well. And this is another interesting feature where customers can uh, write their own profile that is called customized profiles uh, uh, on their own. And then inspect also helps in uh, terms of reporting uh, aspects as well. Like uh, inspect has a um, uh, different set of reporters uh, uh, like JSON reporter, and they can also push the reports into automate uh, with a, a different set of commands. So uh, if you see like inspect has multiple touch points in compliance space. So this is one of the heart of the uh, compliance uh, product. Um, um, yeah, so let us um, uh, see about the uh, overview of the inspect uh, right now. And uh, if you see like in, inspect is basically uh, used to test and audit the applications and infrastructure. 
it is basically uh, based on R spec framework, uh, like Ruby framework. It, it, it ideally uh, uh, compares the actual state of the system versus desired state of the system by means of controls written in the Ruby code. And it also helps to assimilate the findings in audit in terms of the report. And then uh, uh, inspect tool has a good amount of flexibility to test any resources, be it packages, be it files, be it cloud resources, et cetera. So this is the uh, quick overview about uh, uh, inspect. Now uh, let us see what it is used for, meaning like what are the three key use cases of inspect? One is around infra testing, second is around security testing, and third is around compliance testing. For example, in infra test, uh, inspect can be used to test whether the VPI, VPC ID in the cloud exists in the uh, AWS, AWS account, or else like uh, to check if the ELB, uh, Elastic Load Balancer security group exists. So these are like uh, some sort of infra test where we can use inspect to test these things. And second one, in security test, if you ask like check whether the multi-factor authentication is enabled for the root user, or check an IAM password policy, so, so inspect is used to test all the security uh, parameters. And the third is on the compliance uh, testing, meaning like uh, it can be used to test based on CAS benchmarks, stick benchmarks, PCI DSS, NEST, uh, so on. So these are three different types of testings which can be performed using inspect. And uh, if you see like infra test and security test are shipped in uh, cookbooks, whereas compliance tests, like that is the audit content and remediation content can be, access, can be accessed from uh, automate directly. And then how, how this test can be invoked for infra test, if you see like it can be uh, done by means of test, kit, test kitchen in local and CLA environments and for security and compliance tests, it can be done during chef infra client execution as well. So these are the common uh, uh, use cases of uh, uh, inspect. And now let's see what are the benefits of uh, inspect. Uh, so on the coll on, on collaboration point of view, if you see like inspect controls can be easily written in uh, Ruby and can be shared with other DevOps teams. And then these tests can be uh, scaled up to millions of nodes and uh, uh, cloud assets. So one of the primary uh, uh, very big customers is using, uh, uh, having like millions of cloud assets uh, deployed and they're using inspect to test their uh, cloud uh, assets. And then third, another, and then the, another interesting aspect is like uh, inspect is used to test from start to end of uh, software delivery, delivery life cycle, uh, adhering to shift left uh, philosophy. And then last, like uh, these tests can be monitored continuously, like ongoing basis by not giving any room for uh, risk, uh, which in turn gives uh, advantages of like continuous compliance, continuous visibility. So these are the key benefits of uh, um, uh, Inspect. And uh, now let's see what is uh, Chef Inspect uh, language. Um, it, it basically follows a DSL framework, and uh, meaning like domain specific language framework. Uh, inspect supports Ruby as the base code. And if you look at the structure um, on a high level, we have an inspect profile, which is basically a group of controls. On a control level, if you see like we have a bunch of tests and then and, and, and then like um, uh, these tests are done or executed based on resources and uh, matches. So this is the uh, uh, DSL framework which we follow uh, for inspect. For, for example, if you see control CAS, this is like a control and uh, the tests are like uh, used in describe uh, block, describe package and resources like package and matcher is like uh, should not be. So this is like a matcher. So moving on to inspect profile. So what is an inspect profile? So basically a profile comprises of a bunch of controls. For example, Windows baseline or CAS for rel 7 or rel 8 or CAS for CentOS 7. So this could be like a profile. And now let's take a look how the profile is structured. Uh, basically it has like inspect YAML controls, library and readme uh, parameters. Inspect YAML provides the metadata of information about the profile. Metadata includes the profile's description, author's name, um, uh, copyright and version. And then the control has like a directory contains uh, files which implement the inspect test. <clears throat> And then uh, the library directory contains uh, resource extensions and these resource extensions enable you to uh, define your own resource types. And then readme, it's like a mandatory thing and it provides like a documentation about the profile, including what it covers and how to run it. So this is about the uh, inspect uh, uh, profile structure. And now let's see about inspect control block and uh, describe uh, block. Um, so, 
So in, in inspect control block, it basically comprises of a control, or if you take any uh, security requirement like CAS, TIG, SOC 2, NIST standards, there are like list of controls in that uh, documents. So one control tied to, or one requirement tied to one control. And, uh, and these bunch of tests can be grouped together in a control block. And whereas a described block is like equal to one test, that is like testing done on a resource, resource uh, each resource block is equal to one testing. And in this example, we are uh, doing a testing on the resource called as uh, cars. So this is on the uh, uh, inspect uh, control block and uh, describe block. Now, if you see what is a resource, inspect resource, uh, it basically represents a category of things you want to test on, on that uh, item. For example, uh, describe package, package name. Uh, it should not be installed. This is like a test. And whereas the package is the resource here. Um, and then the, and the example given here, it's like car is a resource. And um, and then we have like uh, inbuilt, Chef has curated like uh, 500 plus resources, right from general aspects to uh, AWS, GCP, and uh, Azure resources. So these resources are um, uh, in turn used in uh, AWS, GCP, and Azure uh, benchmarks. And moving on to inspect target. So this is another interesting feature of inspect target. Um, so inspect target is used to denote a mission or a node on which the scan has to be performed, meaning which, the, which uh, audit has to be performed on that machine. It can be OS, it can be platform, it can be application on or on like any different cloud systems like GCP, Azure, or AWS. And, and, the, and the beauty of inspect is like, uh, it is like agentless, whereas inspect need not, need not to be installed in the target machine. So this is the uh, uh, interesting feature on uh, target. And if you see here, like uh, inspect exit test Azure hyphen T. Hyphen T is like the target uh, mission uh, indicating the Azure uh, target aspect. Then on uh, inspect key features, uh, what are the key features of the inspect? So as mentioned in the previous slide, it is, it is like agentless, meaning you don't need to install inspect on the target machine. Uh, inspect uses uh, SSH or WinRM to uh, carry out any testing and it is technology and platform agn agnostic. Uh, in inspect can be used to uh, uh, test on multiple platforms like Windows, Linux, uh, different flavors like Docker uh, and multiple cloud products like AWS Azure. And then inspect, uh, uh, it's, it's like incredibly uh, flexible. Uh, it offers like numerous resources out of the box. However, it is also quite easy to create your own custom resource to meet your uh, uh, requirements. And then, uh, and then it is also easy to write a code uh, through a basic uh, Ruby uh, uh, language skill. And then um, on, on all you need is to have a Chef workstation to get started in writing a uh, test. And then on, in terms of scalability aspects, uh, if you see it can target thousands of nodes by seamlessly integrating with uh, uh, Automate uh, reporting tool also. And uh, before I hand it over to John on the demo, um, I would like to uh, share the benefits of uh, uh, Chef Compliance as well. Like um, our Compliance product uh, help uh, DevSecOps and DevOps people to quickly spin up the audit, uh, set waivers if needed, and start monitoring the systems uh, and run the application seamlessly. Uh, and then second on the continuous compliance, it is it is by ensuring that. Uh, systems and applications are compliant all the time. And then finally, our premium content helps enterprises to realize the value of the audit and remediation quickly with our chef curated audit and remediation content. So these are the key uh, benefits of uh, chef compliance. All right, uh, I would like to hand it over to John for a demo of uh, Inspect Profile, over to you, John. Thank you, Lokesh. Let me just uh, share my yeah. screen here take over for you. Hopefully you can see that. <coughs> yes, I Excuse me. I have a frog in my throat. Um, before I get started, I just want to describe quickly the environment that I'm using. Um, what you're looking at is a, uh, a chef, uh, I mean, a Linux workstation. Um, it's uh, running a derivative of, of Debian, but I could just as soon be using a Windows or Mac system for this. And on this machine, I've installed the Chef Workstation package, which includes a whole bunch of um, uh, tools, including <clears throat> the Inspect 
command line tool, which we'll be demonstrating today. Chef Workstation um, is the modern tool for working with um, anything Chef. So if you're using Chef DK, you should really look at Chef Workstation because everything we do today is possible here. <clears throat> so in, in this example too, in my um, uh, little lab here, <clears throat> I have my Workstation and I set up a target node, uh, which is just an Ubuntu um, system that I'm just going to do some targeting on and, and do some of the exercises. Now, this, this node happens to be Ubuntu, but as Lokesh said, um, the capabilities of InSpec and, and Infra, for that matter, and Chef span a wide variety of Linux platforms, Windows, Mac, Mac OS. <clears throat> I'm going to be giving examples today um, using Linux specifically. So, you know, with the this raw node uh, that I haven't done anything to, I'm just curious um, from a Linux baseline standpoint. And um, this example we actually use a um, remote GitHub repo to grab the actual content. So I don't even have to download anything to my machine directly or, or create anything yet for this example. Um, but this will demonstrate the um, uh, ability to use uh, Inspect just in general. So this is a, a GitHub repo, it's publicly av available and they have this Linux baseline. Um, and I'm gonna target my system using SSH. I'll do like this. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna use my key. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a frog in my throat today. So what this will do is go out and grab this um, information, um, basically all of the, the content. Um, oops. Of course, the demo gods aren't uh, agreeing with me. <clears throat> it would help if I put in the actual correct name of this. So it's going out to this GitHub repo, grabbing this content, um, parsing it, and applying it to this node and checking it for, um, there's about a, a hundred tests, I believe, in here. So you can see just in that short amount of time, um, at the bottom of the screen, you can see that there's 27 successful, 30 control failures, um, 100 successful tests, um, and 63 failures. Not too bad for a raw node, but clearly I can see that um, in, in this case, an Ubuntu box right out, right out of the box isn't considered secure in the DevSec world. So um, let's take a look at a, a, a one of the CIS profiles. Uh, and in this case, uh, um, just going into Chef Automate, which has, um, there are now uh, over 500 of these CIS and STIG based profiles. And I can search in here uh, based on platform and things like that. And there's this uh, level one server version. And in here um, are 204 controls. And each control, and I can click this to open them. This should look a little bit like what Lokesh was just showing. Um, in each one of these is there's a descriptor um, for a different test to be performed. Uh, and each one of these has similar information. And you notice too that they have tags. So you can, um, in descriptions that you can uh, further search and narrow you know, for, for particular users of your, of your team. Now this, um, uh, particular profile. If I choose get, it'll just add it right to my automate dashboard. I can do download, which I've done previously. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, and I can just show you what that looks like. I've put it in a folder called uh, CIS level one here on my workstation. And here are uh, the, the profiles and the included um, individual files, and this uses libraries. It's a fairly sophisticated um, uh, inspect profile because it, it has so many different things in it. It's, it's actually doing quite a bit of stuff. Um, but I can go ahead and run a similar command on my um, uh, little target node. 
<clears throat> actually looking at profiles and CIS. And here I'm just pointing to this, um, the directory where everything lives. And then I'm just targeting my node again, adding, let me just do this because um, I'm not sure that there are any users on this system. Now, what this will do is take the contents of that profile, which I've downloaded, and it had those 200 controls, and it's running it in real time. I haven't installed a chef agent on this um, little Ubuntu node. Uh, just a completely raw system hasn't con been configured in any way. Um, and in this time, um, you know, this, this is a local test. The limit here. Um, really is, there are no limits. Um, as Lokesh said, you could be doing millions of, of nodes and some of our customers do. So this is the view of the result of that. Again, on, on a raw node, I can see 98 successful controls, 84 um, failed. Overall, this thing has over 850 different tests that are happening. Um, and it was reasonably successful on just, just a bare node. Of course, I would use um, Chef Infra to do remediation uh, of this. But let's take another look at this. Um, this is the same file that was just applied to that node. Um, it's the main translated controls um, Ruby file. And you can see here's an example of a couple of controls. Um, this is the actual name of the control in the title. And there's an impact of one, which um, you may have noticed, there's a hierarchy from basically zero to uh, 1.0, one being the highest criticality for what you're doing. But here it's using a couple of the built-in inspect resources, this time using the mount resource to check that attempt folder isn't um, mounted here. It looks like there are several of those um, as part of this base profile. Um, if I scroll through, I'm just trying to find something else in here. Here's a, a bash um, resource that's being used. There are literally hundreds of these that, that can be applied and combined in a profile as tests to test a lot of different things on your system. So um, that's a pretty good example of a very complex version, but I also have in here a, uh, a, a profile for a simple Nginx installation. And here I have just two controls. This first one, which is the configuration, which tests the configuration that I uh, will apply with uh, a cookbook and a recipe. Um, and here, these are on the configuration side that Lokesh was talking about. And this one down here is more on the security side. So I've bundled my different tests into these two distinct controls. The first one is testing ports, it's testing that the package is installed and then it's returning the content. This other one, you know, I, I want to be running, you know, the latest um, TLS. I don't want to be, have this system you know, open to hackers using the Poodle exploit or something else like that. So I've bundled these into this, um, into this control. So if I go um, back to my terminal, and I'm just gonna move into this Nginx uh, folder in my cookbook. And in here I can see again, a whole bunch of stuff, but the, the key is this compliance folder, which holds the content that I was just showing you. And I can do an inspect exec, and I can do it on this profile. <clears throat> Oops. And what this is do is those two controls um, with those, I think there were six tests in there, five or six, uh, it'll go through and go, okay, doesn't, uh, I get a lot of failures, which I would expect because this is a, a completely raw node. Now I have one success, that's port 80 is not listening, but I wouldn't expect that because there is no Nginx installed on this particular target system. So to actually um, do this, I'm going to use a compliance phase. Um, and then this is the default recipe in my 
nginx cookbook folder um, and you can see I'm, I'm including a recipe called web server which i'll show you in a second um, and i'm also including that profile right in the main um, recipe for my cookbook and if i had waivers which are those things that if you're using one of those cis dig um, profiles or something that's more complex or the devsec baseline you can actually use a waivers file to turn off specific uh, elements of those controls so you can take advantage of some pretty broadly available to um, profiles, but customize them to you and your particular needs. So in my web server itself, I have in here, uh, I'm gonna install Nginx and curl. Uh, I'm gonna create some directory, some content for, um, in this case, um, I'm creating a self-signed cert so that it will operate on port 443. I'm uploading some content through templates, including the configuration and I'm starting um the actual service and if that key ever changes i'm i'm reloading it <clears throat> so again this node doesn't have anything on it and i'm going to run a, a um uh an at what's known as an ad hoc uh chef command using chef run and i'm going to target my little ubuntu node and i'm going to use this um uh, the path here. <clears throat> I think I can do it like this, which is I'm just pointing to that file. There we go. Okay, good. And again, I'm going to use this. I might have to run. So, what this is doing. Um, with a chef run, it's this is actually going be, uh, to put the chef client on this device. It's going to apply my cookbook, and it will check the installation with my profile as the final step. Um, normally, uh, if I had a larger scaled enterprise, I would already have bootstrapped my nodes, maybe uh, assign them to policy groups um, and uh, given different policy names that they belong to. So it's, it's whenever they run the chef client, they're automatically pulling profiles and content together and continuously checking themselves. <clears throat> so in this case, um, this little node is which was raw at the beginning. My expectation is that everything's going to be installed, the ports are open and closed according to my plan, and that uh, inspect itself is going to tell me that. And of course it failed. Hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the demo gods are not with me today. <clears throat> For whatever reason, um, but the the outcome of this um, in in running the command again, um, and if I do this, it's still going to fail. Um, sorry about that. Uh, I've been having a couple problems with this particular thing. But even though that said, it failed. When I rerun my inspect um, profile against that, now everything is green. So despite that failure that I got on the, the convergence. Um, Everything was applied and is working properly on this particular system. <clears throat> One of the great advantages, and uh, Lokesh mentioned this before, is being able to take these um, profiles and apply them to more than one. The ad hoc command I just showed you in the terminal is good for one thing at a time during testing, et cetera, things like that. But what I can really um, get a lot of power from is creating a scan job. And here I've got some nodes that I um, have added to my dashboard. And here's this 04 and 05. Um, and I can choose, this is the baseline that I used before from the command line. Um, in this case, it's just now living inside my automate instance. I can give this thing uh, a test name. And if I wanted to, I could set a schedule for this so it would recur and do continuous compliance. <clears throat> so what it'll do, and this is the item here at the bottom, it's going out um, and testing both those systems, um, doing its thing, uh, and it'll give me a report back, not just on one system in the terminal, but it'll actually give me a 
real time report. And if I set up a schedule for this, it would recur and I would get new uh, updated information based on that. And I could, of course, track uh, the status of systems that I've configured um, with these to run these profiles and with these particular cookbooks. Um, to have that uh, information show up in, in one of the main screens. <clears throat> of course, this failed. Not sure why. Um, fortunately, I have another one here that I can show you. Um, so this Linux baseline, you know, it, can sh it shows you that, hey, here's 200 controls. Um, it's not compliant, which we already know because when we ran this from the command line. And you can see in the dashboard that there are um, reds show it's not working this it wasn't able to make a determination the blues are are correct so that shows you um you know the capability of of doing scans on thousands or you know millions of systems um and getting real-time information on those as you go through so that that uh ends my portion and i'll uh, turn it back over to Low cash. All right. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, John, for the uh, demo. Uh, one minute, I'll share my screen again. There's always a couple of bugs, you know. You when when you run through an example, <clears throat> there's always something in there. Um, but uh, you know, to be able to see the outcome is great. Uh, joining us is uh, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. You're on mute. I just wanted to do that because everybody does that, right? They talk on mute. Hey, I'm Michelle Seebeck. I'm the product marketing manager here at Chef. And I am the one who's behind the scenes capturing all your questions. So keep your questions coming. Lokesh, did you have time? You and John want to take a few questions now? I have from our studio audience. Chris wants to know, um, are the resources different for infra versus inspect? Um, John, can I take that or you want to? Yeah, um, <clears throat> the built-in resources, when we describe that, for Chef Infra, there are um, something like 200 different resources. Um, for InSpec, there are nearly 500 resources. They are slightly different because they're doing a couple different things. One is reading information and uh, details about a system. One is configuring things on a system. Um, but those, you know, half of those um, InSpec resources are cloud versions that work for AWS, Azure, uh, Kubernetes, Google. Um, there are also resources in there for looking at running Docker containers, um, looking at images on a Docker host, and there are profiles for checking and, and controls resources for checking actual um, Docker hosts. Yeah, and, and, awesome. uh, and, and there are a few commonalities here, like both InSpec and Infra uh, resources uses the DSL framework. Uh, so um, they use the domain specific language framework and then like uh, they have like custom resources uh, in inspect side as well as in the infra side um, and then like um, um, in infra also they used to test the configuration values and in inspect also they used to test the configuration values like the, the actual state and the desired state uh, these things are tested with inspect and uh, and the the uh, the structure wise there are certain differences there in terms of properties and attributes both with uh, inspect resources and infra resources sure. yeah. awesome thank you that was a great question um here's another question for you guys and i think this is an easy question i was going to answer it but i'll save it for the experts do you have to be a ruby coder to use this <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've I've been with Chef for almost a year. I'd never worked with Ruby before working with Chef. Uh, I still don't consider myself a Ruby expert. I've I've used other coding languages and I've done Bash stuff and I did a lot of time in PHP. Um, Ruby in the way that we present it within the InSpec DSL and the Infra DSL 
is just as Lokesh showed you, it's, it's human readable. It's like, it should be enabled. It should not be running. Um, it should have these, these values. Um, and I also use the VS code. I use VS code as my editor and chef makes an excellent plugin for VS code that does code suggestions and it will insert blocks for you. I use that all the time, but even now I found after um, a very short time of working with chef code, I didn't need that because it's, it's so logical, you, you know, in, in human language um, that I'm always close. So you don't need to be a Ruby expert at all. You can, you don't even have to ever do Ruby um, at a high level, but what it gives you uh, the advantage of is it, it's a real language and you can do logic and it does things like that. <clears throat> so if you do come with some programming skill or, or background, whether it's Ruby or not, that'll, that'll help you, but it's not necessary. I'm, I'm adding to it, uh, like, uh, I'm like um, in Ruby expert wise out of five. If you can, if you ask me to rate, I, I would rate as two. Um, uh, not not like an expert level. But what I would do it's like I I have like Chef Premium content uh, which gives the audit cookbook and recommendation cookbooks. I have CS benchmarks. I'll try to correlate uh, the benchmarks and the rules. It's it's so easy to assimilate or easy to correlate the rules and the code. And, uh, and if you have like SOC 2 or PCA benchmarks also, and then you can try to reuse those controls here and there. So that is the power of Chef Premium content uh, we have with Ruby. Yeah, that's a great point about reusing stuff. I reuse blocks all the time or, you know, whole profiles or I'll set like a standard base profile that'll apply to everything. Then I'll do some add-ons, you know, in other places, um, but yeah. <clears throat> Well, I'm glad I threw it to the experts because I knew that the answer, the short answer was no, you don't have to be an expert, but the insights are, are valuable. So thank you. I have one more question in queue and this says, can you please explain more about the matchers? Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, I'll take that. Um, okay. Uh, so there are like uh, three, three, three types of matches. We have like one is like operator based matches. Second is on the universal matcher, and third is on the uh, resource specific matcher. So, what is operator matcher? It's basically like less than equal to equal to, uh, just to compare these uh, two things. And universal matcher, it's like a use comparison like CMP, MA, match, match keywords, and give the results. And whereas like resource specific matches, like just in case if if you want to see like whether the package is, has been installed like should be installed it's like a it's like a matcher resource specific match so these are like interesting things we we built in inspect and intro for, uh, uh, to to create the uh, profiles and controls yeah and matchers are smart like per particularly the CMP, the comparison one, that if you put in like uh, you want a version to be greater than or equal than to 17.5 and you put that in single quotes in your code, the inspect matcher is smart enough to go, oh, it, he's got 17.9 installed, it passes that true, right. false, greater than, equal is correct. You know, so, um, you know, that's always sort of the default for certain um, tests is the, the CMP, the comp, um, because it's so forgiving, um, but you can get down very closely and use um, regex to do pattern matching very specifically you can include there's actually an include that if there's a list of something like in the example where i'm using ssl i want 1.2 and 1.3 inspect will return a list of those and i want at least 1.2 to be included in that list <clears throat> so there's a lot of flexibility and it's logical too like, like i want it i want that list to include something well the chef code is you should include whatever the value is. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, any other questions? Feel free, again, utilize the Q&A function. We'll be more than happy to do that. But right now, Lakesh and John, I don't see any other questions. So. Yeah. So, Michelle, like, uh, just one thing we, have, we wanted to highlight here. Like, we have, like, uh, learn.chef.io tracks. So, users can look into these courses like chef learn 
test expectations with chef inspect they can watch these videos and these tracks and then they can also refer this inspect docs so if i'm a user no like a inspect user i keep on referring to this docs what are the new features uh, we have released and the, and the docs team has uh, uh, done a phenomenal job of uh, uh, highlighting the resources all those things are in the docs and one of the greatest things that I appreciate about our Learn Chef is that it's at no cost. It's a free resource. You can go in there, learn what you want to learn at your own pace. Right. I, I think it's a valuable resource that I hope that everyone on this call can take advantage of. And there's other blog resources. I recently published something called Chef 101, which includes everything from soup to nuts, installing workstation, and actually creating a cookbook and a profile and applying that. So uh, a lot of the things we talked about today are in that, and it's particularly designed for new users and those that are new to inspect. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? That's a good point, John. Why don't we go ahead and include that in our follow-up email with a resource for them to use as well? Great. I, I, and uh, the last thing I wanted to show here is like the inspect release notes. So this is the like uh, uh, the entire set of releases across Chef portfolio. We have this link here. And uh, if there is uh, um, anything we release on inspect site, we post the uh, updates there in inspect uh, release notes. Just one or two line item about the inspect features, inspect enhancements. So those things uh, users can get into it and uh, look at it and they can refresh their inspect models periodically. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. And uh, I guess with that, we'll uh, call it a wrap. All right. Talk soon, everyone. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.